said, like she said, my name is Brandon Hightower. A lot of you guys know me as B High. And uh, every now and then I tend to wax poetic, but uh, for those of you who don't know, I'll give you an introduction. I stand five foot eleven, but I tend to claim six. Strutting through the school, I run it, but I claim no click. All that I would ever claim is that I am a lyricist. So then I sit down to my pad, I grab my pen and click my bit. And with it, I inspire a message just for this occasion. To hit you with a little lyrical persuasion. To put you in a state of pure elation. Like a preacher that is preaching to the congregation. If at any moment you feel an intimation that your neighbor's not getting appreciation from the rhymes that I'm spitting straight, they lost soul. Then Hit him in the skull with the look so cold And you might say, how this boy be, I get so bold That's to say that his rhymes is prolifically told Well, that's simple, I'm a master Many years of practice, now I'm strong I can hold up the world like Atlas And my competitors are all backless, spineless And vertebrae, but there's nothing more to say Cause more would be rambling, that's not what I'm about I'm more about making the crowd scream and shout With my substance of rhyme and quality of soul So let's jump into the story that's being told <laughs> Throughout the ages, man has a tendency to praise woman for her features. Her <laughs> for her bountiful backside and her bountiful top side and bosoms. And back in prehistoric times, man, they made a statue called the Venus of Willendorf and it praised a woman for, for her womanly features and how she could supply for her children. We move on down the line, and the Greeks, they made their statue called the Venus de Milo. And they praised the woman for her sinuous curves and her beautiful figure and shape. And then we progressed further, and we went to the Renaissance, and Leonardo da Vinci, he made his ode to woman, and he called it the Mona Lisa. Time progressed further, and the poets, they advanced. They called themselves the Carpe Diem poets, and they said that women should seize the day and seize their youthfulness and use it while they have it. And a poet said that 20,000 years should be for every part of a woman, and I agree. Time progressed further and more poets came along and one poet said, she's a brick house. She's mighty, mighty, she's letting it all hang out. And another poet by the name of Sir mix -a he said, I like big butts and I cannot lie. Brothers can't deny. So while these descriptions, while these descriptions are all nice and well, I think that the part of a woman that needs to be adored is the intangibles and her very essence. So I'll give you my description of my Venus and my ideal woman. She's five foot four with pretty brown skin. She can light up any room when she walks in. With the pretty brown eyes, she had me hypnotized with a glance from the side. A smile so contagious, and her style so outrageous. Chop up the Ever 21 so much, she should really own it. Got a lot of swag, and she never won alone it. I tried to get the digits so that later I could phone it, but she wouldn't open her mouth. I could have swore that she had sewn it. Is she shy? I'm just playing hard to get. I'm thinking it's the prior, because she hasn't reacted yet to any of the lines that I've been trying to spit, but it's cool, because it tells me that she's different. Mighty classy like my mother, but unlike any other, she's super intelligent and she never tries to cover. I admire her for that and every other thing she does. I'm not sure, but I think it's what they call love. And it was just my imagination that was running away with me. For the other day, I saw us running around in a field of lilies like two children acting silly without a care. Then I picked her up a lily and I placed it in her hair and she picked me up another one and I placed it in my lapel and our eyes met and we gazed perpetually and our hearts were intertwined and our love shone effervescently. But once again reality wants to poke in her ugly head and I realize that we're not in a meadow but we're sitting in third period and across the room at you I'm gazing. My mind's racing and my heart's blazing. It seems I'm lovesick and you're the cure. I'm addicted to your essence, so beautiful and pure.